Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, September 14th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, everyone, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Uh, you can also visit me on uh, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. It's called DDarko2012. Also on Facebook, uh, we have a global government news group, and you can check that out along with all the headlines and links and YouTube's video description uh, in the order that these articles are presented. So check all those links out. Also, you can follow us on, by email by putting in your email address there. Also, uh, there's about, I think it's four days left for this poll. Libyan leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi will. And you can go in there and check it out, some of the uh, options. I think I kind of fudged this poll, I'll admit it, because uh, the, the majority are saying none of the above. So, and the options were he's either, you know, going to be killed by the, quote, rebels or NATO forces, uh, he's going to commit suicide, or he's going to go on trial. So I guess the other option would be uh, nothing happens. He just disappears and you never hear from him again. So maybe that's uh, what people are aiming at. Okay, so we're going to move on here. I'm going to go uh, with the economy here. And then uh, I might do three videos, it looks like, today. So it'll be the economy in the first video. The second video will be the war of terror and on liberty and then uh, or on freedom, I like to say. I don't really like the word liberty because it kind of implies that uh, you have privileges that are granted by the government, not true freedom. Um, also, in the third video, uh, eugenics and uh, Big Brother, uh, yeah, Big Brother surveillance. So, crude oil slides from six week high on concerns economic recovery to falter. Then we move on. Wholesale prices in U.S. are little change as energy vehicle costs drop. And uh, it goes on here it says producer price index was unchanged after a 0.2% increase in July. Labor Department figures showed today in Washington. We have retail sales and U.S. unexpectedly stagnated. It says here in the U.S., the retail sales unexpectedly stagnated in August as a lack of unemployment or lack of employment and limited income growth restrained the demand, highlighting the risk the economy will stall. And I have more news to back that up. Credit card debt is on the rise again. So after a few years of austerity, credit card debt is rising again, according to data released this week by credit card comparison website CardHub.com. Consumers racked up 18 billion in credit card debt during the second quarter of 2011, 66% more than what they amassed during the second quarter of last year and more than four times what they did two years ago. So they were paying it down before and now uh, as desperate times uh, uh, grass uh, hold here, um, you know, people are getting desperate and I guess they go back to the cards, which really sucks because it's like a never-ending cycle. It says here, youth unemployment surge. And of course, this is with the government too because I've said this before. You keep saying spending, spending, spending. But it's borrowing, 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 borrowing with interest. So, And uh, we have youth unemployment surge triggers worse jobless rise in two years. Then we have highest unemployment increases for two years after jobless rate surged by 80,000. It says here 1.58 million now claiming job seekers allowance. Britain must create 2 million new jobs, says Think Tank. And um, we're going to keep moving here. Income slides to 96 levels. Median household earnings fall for third year, says uh, Census. And um, we're going to move on. And you can see a chart of this. And it actually breaks it down. Black, Hispanics, uh, non-Hispanic whites, and Asians. And they were all down. Um, so you can go in there and check that out. Saying a typical U.S. family got poorer during the last 10 years. So, and look at this. It says medium household income fell 2.3% to 49,000. So 49,000, and it's it's weird because it seems a lot because after taxes and everything um, and bills, it's uh, it's not that much. But still, 49,000. I mean, I don't know that many people are making $49,000. I mean, if they are, they're the people that are uh, uh, in government jobs <laughs> or they are uh, they have tenure somewhere, you know what I mean, where they're just kind of right out the door. And, if, you know, if they're one of the lucky ones that didn't get fired because they're making that much, um, they're going to sneak out still making at least this much money. But I don't know. That just seems like a comfortable income to me. So it says Indian inflation rises to yearly high of 9.78%. And then moving on here, it says here the uh, the budget office, Congressional Budget Office, unemployment will remain near 9% through 2012. And, of course, that is, um, like I said before, that's not a true accurate number of the people that are without work you know and they keep using this number and it's not accurate it's not an accurate way to portray um the situation the you know the situation that's going on so 
um, if you if you see nine percent, usually you can double it. It's about eighteen percent unemployment. So, it says here uh, chances of another recession increasing. Says Reuters poll. Then we have polls seventy two percent see U S economy on the wrong course. Americans' pessimism about the economy has deepened, and confidence in both political parties, which they're basically the same thing, has fallen with only 20% saying the country is on the right course even as they remain divided over solutions. Just 9% of the people say they are confident the economy won't slide back into recession. And that's a Bloomberg national poll. Quote, this country is going downhill, says Glenn Davis, 53, political independent and a factory worker from Lafayette, Indiana. Says here, quote, for regular people like me, it's hard to get ahead. And uh, that's becoming more prevalent here. It says here, uh, economists, 46 out of 50 U.S. states are insolvent. It goes here during a presentation today, Adam Smith Institute, economist Kevin Dowd, a visiting professor at the Pensions Institute, says here he told the audience uh, fiat money is entering its death spiral. Banks are crooked uh, – I'm sorry, banks use crooked accounting methods to hide losses and enrich employees with bonuses. It's another form of looting. And I saw the corporate, uh, what is it, the corporate men or something like that, I think it is, with um, Ben Affleck and Tommy Lee Jones. That was a really, really good movie. I thought I was going to uh, not like it because, you know, Kevin Costner now, because it seemed like it was kind of programming to accept this, you know, decrease in standard of living, but it really did have a good point in it. Um, Chris Cooper, too, saying, I'm going to take a fucking AK-47 to this place if they fire him, and they did fire him. He ended up killing himself uh, through a sick association uh, in his garage because he couldn't face his wife who was used to the standard of living. So, you know, it was a good movie. I recommend checking it out. It says at least 46 out of 50 U.S. states are insolvent, so that's what he said. Go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. Mr. President, we need a 10-year plan. almost sounds like... Um, Stalin or Mao or something, right? America's collapsing. Shovel-ready projects won't cut it, says Lawrence Summers, Larry Summers, former Treasury Secretary. So he's going to come in here and give his little uh, his little two cents. But what he's basically doing in, in here is he's promoting this infrastructure bank. That's what this $447 um, billion dollar, uh, borrowing bill is going to do. It's They call it a jobs bill, but it's an infrastructure bank. It's going to be a slush fund of these infrastructure where you're going to have all these municipalities and uh, roads and all that, and they're all going to be fixed up with your money. Well, not really your money. It's it's from people that aren't born yet. Um, but it, it's going to be sold off in private. It's going to be privatized. They're going to say, see, you're going to save money. You're going to save money. It's going to lower costs and prices because we're going to privatize it. And then it's going to get privatized and with all, and it's going to be all fixed up with your money with this infrastructure bank fund, slush fund, and then they're going to privatize it and they're going to, the rates are going to go up because there's going to be no competition uh, and it's, uh, because it's going to be bidded to the largest uh, monopoly or duopoly companies. And that's the way it works. So it's here more Americans are doubling up. More people are living with family amid high unemployment rates and a slow economy. But while the phenomenon is keeping the poverty rate lower, is wider negative economic uh, consequences. And it goes on here and says how bad it is because fewer households mean fewer consumers for business, desperate for demand. So if you, you're living in a house, you have one TV, and it's basically going on to say that, you know, two thirds of the economy is consumer spending and savings bad. And yet, you know, uh, Germans and that are notorious for being big savers. Um, and they tend to get by. So, I mean, I don't really believe in that. I think you need sound. Not really policy. Policy in, uh, insinuates a system. I don't want any system. I want a free market. And in doing that, you allow people to accrue savings because they don't have to spend all of their disposable income that they could be saving on uh, accruements. And that's what they're doing now to get by. That's why credit card rates are on the rise. So this year, migrants are better qualified than workers born in the UK. So study, 34% of migrants in the UK have post-school qualifications compared to about 29% of local workers. Moving on, southern minorities more optimistic about jobs. Findings could make Make a difference in the 2012 elections, whatever. Uh, my point here is that, uh, yeah, blacks are uh, uh, moving south, returning south of the Great Migration, and this was from 83011. I remember that article. Um, a little bit of a trend there. So Obama gets a slight boost from job speech, says poll. Really? Is that is that right? Poll, weak support for Obama's job plan, then Obama's disapproval rating hits new high. Then we keep moving here. Italy turns to uh, China for help in its debt crisis, talking about buying some bonds. And it says here, Italy Parliament passes austerity plan, so it's passed by the upper and lower houses. Eurozone debt crisis could break up the EU. That's true. Then we have.
UK taking legal action against European Union Central Bank says they're taking legal action over a plan to change the European banking rules that could harm the city of London. French bank ratings downgraded by Moody's and use of private contractors actually cost more for the government, and that makes sense because military spending wasted up to $60 billion in Iraq and Afghanistan. It says here Obama tax plan hike uh, attacks top earners of health insurance and redux of 2010 fight. U.S. may end taxes on some overseas profits. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Then we have insider report. Obama uh, intends to unionize U.S. military with executive order. Interesting article. Check that out. Lights, camera, advertisements. And it goes on. World Bank recognizes Libya's uh, NTC. Materialistic culture plagues U.S. kids. British children feel trapped in a materialistic culture and want more time with their families as well as a ban on TV advertising. Scientists help students adapt to climate change. Toronto School Board develops climate change course with Environment Canada. Carbon tax debate will run for equivalent of one minute per MP per bill. So that's real nice in Australia. And it says here, phased out, Easy Bake Oven loses its 100-watt light bulb. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.